Okay, I think I'm live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the live video tutorial for We Love Animal Butts or We Heart Animal Butts. My name is Chris, and this is the 10th installment of my Butts series. Can you believe it? Already 10. So we've been doing the Butts series for, I want to say, a year and a half or maybe a little less than a year and a half. This is already the 10th one. All right, look at all those butts. Um, let me know in the chat, maybe what other animal butts you've done in the past with me or other tutorials. Maybe let me know in the chat where you're from or you know anything at all. Maybe Maybe it's your birthday today, let me know. All right, welcome to Sandy in Oklahoma. Hi, Jared, good to see you. Welcome to Carrie all the way from Australia. That's awesome, super. Um, let's see, there's a question here. Luxter asked, what size canvas? So today I'm gonna be doing a 16 by 20, quite big, but you can do literally any size and it doesn't even have to be canvas. What if you wanna do this on paper? You could do this on wood. What about on a t-shirt with some fabric paint? Any size that you wanna do. All right, um, we will go through the supplies in a moment. Let's talk about the butts themselves. You don't have to do exactly the same butts that I'm gonna do or in the same arrangement or the same number. You can switch it up to maybe your own pet's butt, whatever that pet may be, or something incredibly unique. What if you wanna have an alligator butt on there? You could totally do that. Uh, ring tail lemur. What about um, maybe a human butt, I don't know. <laughs> maybe you feel like you want to add a human butt to that. That's up to you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and different colors too. So background color is totally up to you. Totally, you can, you can do an arrangement of say four butts or six butts or butts to represent your Five cats, let's say. All right. Donna is in Dundas, Ontario. Oh, we're pretty close. Nancy in, I'm going to go with Oregon. O-R. Could be. All right, let's do the supplies. And keep in mind that we're on a, we are on a live feed. I am live. But you are able to pause run and grab something and then come back you can pause you can rewind even and if you're watching this uh playback a little later you can even fast forward all of my random drivel so let's talk supplies let's put this one here for a sec i have a canvas but canvas is optional you could do paper i mentioned maybe wood maybe a t-shirt a nice small size maybe for a greeting card anything, any surface you want to paint on. I have some paint, so I've got uh, acrylic paint today. You could adapt this tutorial to anything, pastels, watercolors, um, colored markers, colored pencils, anything you want. I've got my five basic colors that I always use uh, right here in my very uh, fancy plastic palette. It's just like a frozen meal tray black and white, pretty much every painting, you're gonna need black and white. And then I've got my three primaries. So I've got a bit of blue, yellow, red. Those are the, th the three primary colors. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, there's no, there's no blue in this painting. There's no blue, you're right. There's no blue, but we're gonna use the blue to make other colors. So that's why I need some blue. And then over here, I just grabbed a little pink you can make pink, 
with red and white. I just decided to grab a little extra pink for my own purposes for the background. So those are the colors I have today, but you can use any medium, any color. Absolutely. Um, I have over here to make the heart shape and to make the heart shape consistently, I'm going to, this is my original cutout, cut out from a, like a Kleenex box. I'm just going to cut a heart shape out of this little scrap from the recycling bin. And then I can trace that heart. However, number of times you want to do nine in my case, but you could do any number of hearts. So it's good to have a bit of just something from the recycling bin. It could even just be thin paper, thin card, scissors. I've got a pencil and an eraser. Any pencil, any eraser would be fine. And then optional supplies. I've got a, just like a Sharpie, any, any old Sharpie. This is like an Amazon brand Sharpie to do the black outlines, but that's optional. You don't have to do the black outlines. I think it's a cute look. And then I also grab some paint pens, black and white paint pens, acrylic paint and a pen. How handy is that? So I'm going to use these to do my outlines and some little highlights. But again, that's optional. You don't have to add all those outlines and the little white highlight. It just adds a little bit of more um, pizzazz, a little more 3D effect. But you can achieve that same look with the black and white paint with a thin, thin brush and a steady hand. But I think just the paint pens make it a little bit easier bit easier. What else do I have? Paint brushes, of course. I've kind of got, oh, kind of like a big, a medium, and a small. Nothing fancy. They're very worn out, well-used, well-loved. Just kind of a big, medium, and small. Whatever you have at home. Dollar store brushes would be fine. Got a cup of water and my little rag to wipe off my brush. Paper towel would be okay. And, you know, put, put something down, a uh, tablecloth, newspaper, plastic sheet to protect your table. You want to get paint all over your table. Maybe put on an apron if you're a particularly messy painter. All right. So remember we are on a live feed, but you can pause at any point to take a break. Um, catch up to the point that I'm at. You don't have to go at this exact same pace that I do. Okay, so I've got my, just a scrap from some advertising from the recycling box. We're going to cut a heart shape out of that. Now, if you wanted to first, like, you know, pencil sketch a heart shape before you cut it, go for it. Um, I'm doing nine and I do want them to take up most of the room. They're the focal point. So make them quite big if you have a big canvas or paper. Give it a little cut. And after you cut it, you can always adjust it, make it smaller. Or if you make it too small, get a new scrap piece of paper and make it bigger. This is my original. Any, any size for our heart-shaped bums. I can't believe it's 10 already. If you're new to the channel, if you're new to Artist Palette Durham, uh, on our channel we have phew, dozens, hundreds of free videos already uploaded, including all the rest of the butt series. Get a nice big size. Think about how big your canvas or paper is. I'm going to do nine. So that's why I'm making it this size. So I think nine could easily fit right here. Let's get a good angle there. We're going to trace that with pencil. Any pencil at all. Um, and I do kind of fun, jaunty angles. Mine are on kind of cute 
angles. Yours don't have to be. They could be straight up to you. Give that a trace. And yeah, while you're tracing these, think about what animals you want to represent. Um, they don't have to be real animals. What about a unicorn butt with a rainbow tail? That could be a thing. They don't all have to be lined up in rows. They could be kind of haphazard all over the composition. So I made the, the butts in this particular composition heart-shaped because we've got, uh, we've got Valentine's Day coming up and we just want to show our love for animal butts. We've done so many. So some of these are sort of brand new to the butt series, like panda. We've never done a panda butt before. Uh, but in the past, we have done uh, zebra. We have done elephant. We have done cat and dog. So those ones aren't brand new butts. What else? Maybe... Hmm, could you do maybe a, a bird? I think a bird would be tough to do. They don't really have very juicy rear ends that would make a heart shape. What about other mammals? I think mammals have kind of developed a bigger rear end for attracting a mate because apparently that's something desirable from mammals. Okay. I've got six so far. I'm gonna do the full nine. What angle do I wanna do here? To kind of go back and forth with the angles or they could be straight. Lots of good ideas in the comment in the chat there. I'm seeing heart-shaped canvas. Ooh, that would be interesting. There are heart-shaped canvases out there. There's round canvases, ovals. I like it. Chameleon, interesting. A chameleon butt. I guess the curly tail would help show that it's chameleon, curl of the tail. Certain animal butts are a little difficult to show in a kind of a simplified way. All right, I've got nine hearts, uh, but yeah, any amount that works with your ideas, your size that you're working with, there we go. You could save that for another time another butt painting. We are going to uh, lightly sketch some of the features we need to add, such as tails, um, but we don't necessarily need to sketch out, say, the spots, the stripes. We'll do that right away with the paint. We won't need to pencil those in. Okay, so um, I'm going to kind of do the same order as the original, but if you want to mix it up a little bit or do completely different animals, definitely go ahead with that. So this top left one, I did a giraffe. So just a really long tail. It could curve this way or it could curve that way. Whatever works best for your situation. I might curve it this way. A long giraffe tail getting thinner and thinner. And then it's got like a little poofy, poofy tuft of hair at the end. So that's really all we need to do for the giraffe butt sketch. That's it, simple as that. 
Um, this top middle one, I did a zebra, zebra butt, and it's also very similar. We're just going to add a long swooping tail, and the end of the tail is more of a, a long brush versus like a poofy brush. Let's go. I could go that way or this way. Let's go this way. Thick to thin, and then, yeah, it's just kind of like long shaggy hairs at the end of the zebra tail. Okay, and what do I have here? Elephant. Elephant is here. Also very similar, a long tail. But I did kind of more of the butt crack, I guess you could call it, down the middle. So let's have my tail. I'm going to have it go this way this time. A little fatter here. Swooping. It could go within the body or off the body. I'll go off the body. And it has a little, little tuft at the end. And then I'll just, this will be the, the crack between the two halves, between the two cheeks. Elephant. And what's our next row? Pig. And then I did like leopard, jaguar, cheetah. Those are kind of the, the big cats. Um, I forget which one has the open spots. I think cheetah has closed spots. So I think this is more leopard in that the spots are open. But correct me if I'm wrong. So over here I have a pig with just like a curl tail, just one curl. Um, but yours could be like a very curly pig tail going kind of. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to do one curl, one loop around like that. But then I thicken it up so it has some thickness to it, sort of like that. One loop is more realistic, but I think in cartoons, pigs will have maybe like a couple loops. And then, yeah, maybe a bit of a crack <laughs> situation there for the pig. Okay, and then we're calling this leopard with the open spot. So long, long, thin tail, probably our longest tail of the whole bunch of them. Yeah, it looks like it. It could be curling that way, curling that way. Maybe you want, um, maybe you want the tail to kind of curl and then maybe rest and flop over one of the other parts. Whatever you feel like. Long and thin. Let's go this. It could even overlap another tail. Maybe something like that. Look at that. Nice and long. Any of the big cats, if you want to do more of a cheetah print, filled in dots. Long, long tail. I've got a little panda, a panda bum. So the legs of the panda are black. So we just do some curves to show maybe where the legs start, I guess. that. I try to make them the same on both sides. And then a bit of a, another bit of a crack here. And then this panda's tail is kind of going up. So it does kind of fill in the, the gap of our heart, but I think it still seems heart-like. Like a leaf shape. I would say that's like the shape of a leaf, a wide leaf. Something like that. Okay, and then let's look at our bottom row. Again, you can change them to whatever you like. A 
like a tabby, gray tabby cat, little corgi butt, or any dog that you want to do. Beaver. I'm in Canada. Let's do a little beaver. Okay, so this is the cat on this side. Lots of cats have their tails sticking kind of straight up as they walk along, so why not? I'm going to curve it a little to the left. Any kind of cat tail. What if you have like a beautiful long haired cat and you want a big bushy tail? You can definitely do that. There's my cat's tail. And I just did like a little snowflake shape for the, the bum hole. And yeah, a bit of a bit of a division here, a bit of a crack to show two separate legs. Oh yeah, koala. Koala bear, yeah, gray, fuzzy, that could be cute. Good suggestion, Carrie. Um, oh, Corgi. Corgi is our next one. So the tail comes down, kind of short and stubby tail, but quite wide. Little corgi tail. And then there's like white and brown around here. So kind of like a heart within a heart. This is kind of heart shaped within the big heart that is the whole bum. Kind of like that. I'll put a little crack there. Oh, have I got a funny joke that kind of goes with the theme. Why do ducks have tail feathers? I'll let you think about that for a minute as I do my beaver. Nice wide beaver tail. Something like that. Good, so that's really all we need to do for the sketching. That's the whole thing. I'll put this here for a moment if you want to look at that as you're doing your sketches. So why do ducks have tail feathers was the question. It's to cover their butt quacks. Crickets. <laughs> if we were on Zoom, this would be different. You'd be cracking up. You'd turn on your microphones and you'd be laughing. Oh, I got one. Lol. Thank you, Coffee Gypsy. <laughs> They're butt quacks. Um, if you're not quite done your sketch, don't worry. Just hit pause. Finish your sketch. Erase. Adjust. Do what you need to do. Maybe do some research on a particular animal that you want to draw, but you, you're not quite sure what their butt looks like. Just in the old Google. Koala butt, um, shark butt. I will take my eraser and just tidy up a few little spots that I want to tidy up. Like there's all this like extra junk in this panda tail. We don't want that there. What about if there's hearts that are overlapping, you need to decide which one is in front of the other one. Um, for me, I think these three are in front, and then these ones are the next behind, and then these ones are behind that. So I'm going to erase certain parts of hearts that I don't want. Um, but the erasing is not necessary. We're going to paint this in a moment, and it'll cover up all that stuff, like you know, all these lines cutting through my cat tail. I mean, this big old line, I don't want that there. Um, but yeah, most of these will get covered up very easily with paint in a moment. Yeah, a little bit here. I'm not too fussy. Yeah. Okay, uh, we are going to do the background first. We'll do the background in its entirety before we get into the butts themselves. Um, I've got yellows, a bit of orange, a bit of pink, a bit of kind of a 
plummy purple. You could do um, light blue into medium blue into dark blue at the edges. What about just one color? Doesn't have to change colors, it could be one color. Pinks and reds for Valentine's Day. Your favorite colors, your bedroom colors, your best friend's colors, favorite colors. Black, could be a black background. Whatever you feel like. Let's get some paint involved. Move this, get this going. Get out of the way. We will reference that one as we go. Okay, I'm gonna use, I'll probably use my medium brush for a lot of the background. I might not even use my big brush at all. It might be just medium and small. But use the brush that's appropriate to the size and area of your particular composition. So if yours is quite significantly smaller than mine, maybe you're just using a small brush the whole time. I get my brush wet. I'm going to start with like yellow, lighter colors near the center, kind of in these little negative spaces. And then I'll work it to like orangey, pinky, purpleys. But you do you. You do whatever color you want to do. Uh, my brush is wet. I'm going to get a little bit of yellow plus a little white because I know for a fact that my yellow is quite see through. So I'll just grab a little white. Grab a little yellow. Yellow and white. It's still very yellow in color, but just a little white in it just helps. It just helps a little bit. And while I'm painting my background, it's okay if some of my paint goes on to some of my hearts or my tails. I'm not going to be too worried about that. Even like this zebra tail here. Whoops. I accidentally painted right on it. Darn. It doesn't matter. We're going to paint that zebra tail right on top of that yellow. And we won't even know. So I'm just going to kind of focus my yellow right in the middle. The negative space near the middle of my composition. Maybe you really enjoy the color yellow and you want to do all of the background, all the negative space in yellow. You can do that. Look at that. See, I've got lots of yellow that blobbed onto here. It is all going to get covered up. Yellow, any shade, lemon yellow, cad yellow, or a completely different color, maybe a lovely baby blue. And I do it quite thin. I'm kind of smoothing out any thick globby bits. We want this to dry fairly quickly so we can layer on top, like, you know, the the leopard, the, the zebra. Okay, there's some yellow, and it's kind of in the middle. Yellow. Um, the next color I'm personally going to do is a bit of orange. So orange, we just get a little bit of red, like little. There's a little bit of red there. Here's that yellow I was working with. Get a little red in there. A little bit more. Any shade of orange, it could be more of a peachy, more of a salmony, could be more jack-o'-lantern orange. It's lovely, that's a lovely orange. I'm going to paint some orange kind of around where I've got my yellow. Where else? Maybe a little bit there, maybe a little bit there. And then wherever the orange and the yellow are kind of touching each other, 
I'll just kind of squidge them together. So then it's like a yellowy orange blend. And it's okay if it's not like a seamless blend. We're gonna be uh, putting another layer on top of this of white. So we won't even see where they kind of touch and blend. Yeah, even if some of the orange is a little bit on the yellow, that's fine. Visible brush strokes, those are fine. Don't worry about visible brush strokes. We're gonna purposely make a bunch in a moment. Okay, there's some orange. So kind of around that yellow area. And then as I move outward, I want it to be um, kind of pinky. Could be like a pinky orange or just pink. So I do have some pink here and I've got some orange here. Why don't I mix some pink and orange together? This painting here is not going to turn out exactly like this one. That's fine. Yours at home, not going to be exactly like mine. The person sitting next to you painting along with the same instructions, that's not going to look exactly like yours either. Everyone's is different. And we'd like to embrace and celebrate all the different versions, interpretations, your style. Yeah, so we've got kind of like a brighter orange happening right here, a little bit, a little bit pink. Camera, the camera and the the YouTube, I don't think it shows exactly what these colors look like in real life, but close enough, close enough to follow along. Yeah. And then I think I'll add some more red. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, I think I'll go with this kind of reddish tone. It's got a little pinkish in it, uh, all the way to the very edges, corners. But if you felt like going in the, like a purple direction near the edges you could. There's tons of visible brush strokes all throughout this. You don't have to perfectly blend it out. It could be lighter in some areas, darker in others. Where the two colors meet, I just kind of squidge them together, mess it all up. All around, just kind of swish them together, 
Look at all those brush strokes. If you do want to paint the like sides, like this, like the edge down here, the side, you can do that too. So it like wraps around the edges. I usually don't. Yes, Nancy, this can be viewed uh, later today, forever afterwards. It'll always be on our channel. Yeah, so if you go to our channel and there's a search, there's always a search option. If you just search up butts, you're going to get 10 different videos at this point for butts. There you go. It started off as a dare. Liesl dared me to have a painting with the word butts in the title. And I said, I got this. And it just became a, a whole thing. So we do a butts painting every maybe every other month, not every single month, often seasonal. Okay. So I've got kind of a bright yellow to orange to a little bit of pinky orange to reddish pinkish, but literally any colors you want to do, do them. You could do these colors this time do another version another time with maybe bright green, Ooh, jungle colors, green into maybe an emerald into like a brown. That could work. Okay, I'm happy with that. Don't worry about the visible brush strokes. We kind of want that. Uh, do worry about thick globs. We don't want any thick globbies. So look around, maybe look at your painting on an angle, lift it up, turn your head, tilt your head, see if there's any thick globbies anywhere and just spread them flat. Spread them flat so they'll dry. Oh, there's a globby. Globby, globby. We're going to put some white on top of this. Seems strange, but it's uh, it's an effect that I like to do. Kind of um, mellows it out, tones it down a little bit. Give that brush a little washeroo. We're gonna do white in a bit. Yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, so maybe you didn't even notice the background has these uh, white, very light, kind of wispy, um, kind of a cross hatch pattern is that in that there's some lines going this way, some going this way. Um, it just gives it kind of a fun texture. It mutes the bright color of the background, so it's not so shocking. I use it a lot in a lot of paintings. What else do I have nearby that I can show you an example of? Here's one. This is one of the tutorials available on our website. It's a llama with a latte, but there's that kind of cross hatchy background. That's a good one. Um, last month, so um, I think it was Boxing Day. We did the customizable sweaters. That one's on YouTube, free. Same kind of background. Very versatile. Versatile background. What about oh, I'm big on llamas? Here's another llama painting with the same sort of background, just in different color patches. That is post impressionist llama available on our website. You could do, you know, any subject you want and then just do kind of like a muted background to make the subject the focus. You want to focus on this. How are we doing? What do I have that I could fan this with? 
the heart shapes. Thanks, Nancy. I do like painting llamas. They're kind of a trendy animal, aren't they? I have um, been to a llama and alpaca farm and we got to like walk, walk the llamas on, on a leash. That was cute. Yeah, give your painting a little, little time to dry, a little dry break. Have a little sip of a beverage or a little snack. Um, some people have hair dryers nearby and they'll blow dry their paintings or some people even pick up their painting and like fan the painting in the air. Just don't hit anyone. <clears throat> Pardon me. Come on. It's gotta be a little bit more dry. It's okay if some bits are a teeny bit wet, but I do want most of this to be dry. If you're new to our uh, channel, we do have a website, artistpalettedurham.com. You can find all of the upcoming events, so both the paid events and the free events, all on our website there. You can even get a free ticket to the free events, and then you'll get email reminder day of when we do, do our free events. Subscribe to our channel. You'll be notified when we go live. There's an idea. Like this video. Unless you're holding out to see if you'll like the butts in the end to, to like the video, but I think so far so good. And on our website, we have all of the all the past uh, paid events too. So, you know, if you are brand new and you saw something you liked that you missed out on the first time, it's it's still there. You can still follow along with that tutorial. I think we're having a sale. When's the sale end? There's definitely a sale. When does that end? Let's check. When does our sale end? So if you're on Facebook, Artist Palette Durham Region is our main page. When is the sale end? Got to keep scrolling. There we go. Our sale ends the 6th. So we still have four more days on the sale. 35% off. All of our events, our upcoming events, and our video tutorials. Or if you're a subscriber to our website, 55% off. What a deal. So check out our website. Take advantage of that sale. The, the uh, codes for the sale are on our Facebook page. That's, that's pretty good. Pretty good. There's a couple little teeny tiny wet spots that I'm not too, too worried about. If yours is not at this stage yet, that you can kind of comfortably pat it. I've got a little bit. Uh, just hit pause, wait a few minutes for yours to be more dry. But we're going to add our second layer onto the background. Then we can get to work on our animal butts. I'm going to use my, yeah, my medium again. Make sure it's nice and clean. No more pinks or reds in there. White, just white. I'm going to get a bit of white on my brush, but I'm also going to wipe it. Wipe it on the side, wipe it on the rag, wipe it on the tablecloth. So it's more like a, of a very, um, like a dry brush technique, very wispy not huge gobs of white. We don't want that. 
and I'm going to do diagonals. So this diagonal, this diagonal. You could do, you know, horizontal and vertical as an option. I just like the diagonals. And I just wisp some white right on top of all these colors to just tone it down. And get a little bit more paint, wipe it on the edge so it's not gobby, wispy. Think wispy thoughts, diagonals, think the letter X. And just start very lightly. Light, 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 and then kind of gradually build it up. And it's white, so we don't have to worry about, oh, if I accidentally get some on, you know, this animal butt. It's fine, it's white. Little bits at a time, kind of working all over. to any degree that you like. There's gonna be some darker bits, lighter bits, thick, thin. And even if, say a little bit of your underneath color is still a little wet, like maybe some of the red. It's okay, it'll just kind of blend with the white, make a little bit of a pinky color. And everything is fixable. So let's say you, you get carried away with the white and you put too much white on a certain spot. Well, then just get the original color, put some of that on top of the white. Kind of go back and forth until you have the perfect kind of coverage that you want. Yeah, it's a really unique way to texture, I like a little texture, a little interest. You could do stripes instead. You could do polka dots in the background if you want. Yeah, and the, the parts where like two colors blended together and you tried to maybe get a nice gradient or ombre effect there. Well, no one can see that now because now there's some white on top of it. So that's why it didn't really matter when we did it. Yeah, everything's very, very thin, wispy. This is gonna dry so quickly. That's good because we wanna get some of these animal butts going. Okay, I'm quite happy with the amount that I have. If you wanna work on it a little bit longer, just hit pause and catch up at your own pace. I'm happy with that. Whoops, little bit of red got on there. While we have white on the brush, we might as well paint things that are going to be white. So the corgi butt right here, that kind of heart within a heart, that's going to be white. And yes, we're going to paint the white areas, even though it's a white canvas, especially because we did some of these 
kind of messy brush strokes that got onto the heart, right? And we have pencil lines that need covering. So white things do need to be painted white. We don't just leave naked canvas. Very rarely do I leave naked canvas just exposed. Okay, now the edges of things as we're going along, whether it's the white or brown or yellow, the outer edges of things don't have to be like perfectly, perfectly smooth because we are going to outline. Lots of outlining will help tidy it up. Gives it kind of a crisper edge, more of a cartoon kind of uh, vibe. So don't worry too much about the perfect crisp edge. What else is white? This whole zebra butt and tail is white and just paint right over your pencil lines. You know, you know kind of where your zebra tail is and probably you might be able to see your pencil lines through the paint. I know I can. But if you can't, you could just make up where the tail is later on. Again, it's okay if the edges of your heart are a little bit not smooth, jagged even. That could be part of the zebra's hair. We are gonna give a lot of the animals kind of a jaggedy edge. So if your paint is a little jaggedy, perfect. Let's say you used much darker colors in the background. Some of it got on the zebra and painting over with white isn't quite covering it. I would just, you know, wait a couple minutes, do a second coat on the offending color and that should help. Plus we're gonna do black stripes later on. That'll help cover some of that too. Um, my white zebra bum, but also the tail. The tail kind of cuts across this way a bit. On the leopard a tiny bit, but that's just mine. Another part that's white is the panda's bum, this upper part of the bum plus the tail. Um, but down here is going to be black legs. If you're saying to yourself, whoa, 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 you're going too fast. Well, just hit pause. I've said it a number of times. You don't have to go at my pace. I'm painting or drawing almost every day. And I'm just naturally a little faster. But it just takes practice. white panda upper bum. Sometimes my pencil, my pencil lines make it kind of grayish white, but that's kind of cool. It gives it kind of like free shading, like that little bit of gray. What else could be white? I mean, on mine, nothing else is like solid white like this, but let's say you have a, a white cat or you've done a polar bear butt. Paint that white. Have a look around. What is white? Okay, that's pretty good. Um, I think I will do, <laughs> I think I'll do the yellow, yellow of the giraffe, because I know I'm going to have to do two coats, the yellow then the brown spot. So we might as well do our first coat on the giraffe, yellow. And giraffes are kind of like, they're not really yellow, yellow. They're kind of like tan, 
Mine's going to be kind of more cartoony yellow than like a real giraffe. But I'm still going to add a little white into my yellow. Maybe some of this orange will kind of mix in there too. So it's maybe not like blindingly yellow. Let's give it a little test. You can always do a little test, see if you like the color. Yeah. I put a little white in it and then like a little, a little smudge of red. So it's kind of like an orangey, slightly orangey yellow. I like that. That's a nice color, I think. I mean, it looks completely different when I look at it in person. I'm going to look at the screen over here. Just as long as it's not like super yellow. Make it just slightly something different. Again, a nice thin coat. We don't want thick paint here. We want this to, to dry. We're going to do a second coat of spots, spotties. And again, I'm not worrying too much about my edges. Those will get tidied up with line work. Whether that's a Sharpie, Sharpies work awesome on top of acrylic. They just glide right on there. Or a paint pen, or just good old fashioned thin brush and a steady hand. A nice giraffe, giraffe bum. Don't forget my giraffe tail. This way, that's pretty good. And the little poof on the end will be brown. Okay, nice and thin, spread it out, no globbies. Cute. Gorgeous. Okay, I think I'll do my leopard base coat next because it's kind of similar to like a yellowy browny color. Kind of an ochre, kind of an ochre color, yellowy brown, this color. Um, so I have some of that. I do have some yellow here. Yellow. I'm going to put in a little bit of red to make it orangier. And it's going to sound weird. I'm going to add a tiny speck of blue. Little. Here's a little speck. The blue will help brownify this kind of yellowy orange. Or black, I might put a little bit of black in there. I'm gonna put some more yellow. So it's kind of like a little bit brownish, kind of mustard. Oh yeah, it kind of looks like Dijon. Let's give a little test, give a little test run. Yeah, not quite yellow, not quite brown. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. I'm going to continue with that color. If you have some brown paint at home, pre-mixed brown, I would just do a little brown, do a little yellow. Boom. You don't have to mess around with the blue with the red. Nice and thin. And there's going to be so many um, spots, pattern of spots on this leopard bum that any visible brush marks aren't going to matter. They're going to get lost in a sea of spots. Okay. 
I've got a little sliver that I got to get in. So I got to get a smaller brush. Get right in this little sliver. Yeah, because I've got the zebra tail coming across there just a little. Yep, I like that. That's a good first coat there. No thick globbies. Okay. Let's look at, look at this corgi color. Kind of a brownier, a little bit reddish tone. We're kind of going like lighter, getting darker, even darker. And then we'll make a nice rich, rich brown right here. So this is kind of like a little bit brownier. Well, let's see what we can do here. So I've got this kind of leopard color. I'm going to add a little more red, a little more red, a little more blue. And corgis, there are different shades of corgis out there too. Maybe a little more yellow. Yeah, basically like any brown that you want to do. When I want to make brown, I usually start with orange, red and yellow, more yellow than red. I make an orange and then to the orange, I add either black or blue to like brownify it. That's pretty good. Let's give a little test. That's kind of a corgi butt color. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. If you want it um, more reddish, go a little redder. Add a little more yellow if you want it a little lighter. But I'm happy with that. Corgi butt color. So we're going to go around here. So this is the kind of outside of the heart within the heart because we've already painted the white part of the heart. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? How silly. The leopard's tail. If you're still working on your leopard color, do the tail because I didn't. Oops. Okay, so that's like the um, floofy, tiny little tail of the corgi butt right here. But I got to do the, the leopard tail. What did I do here? A little, I'm going to make this lighter. Lighter with some yellow. Let's see. It's not terrible. Even if it's like a slightly different color, it'll be okay. Leopard tail fixed. Okay. Go. And then we'll do our darkest shade of brown yet. Nice chocolatey brown for our uh, beaver butt. Beaver butt, nice chocolatey brown. I did, it's hard to tell. I did slightly different tones of brown here. This one's a little, little bit more reddish, but it could just be one shade of brown here. It's very subtle. 
think you'd have to be here to really see it. Okay, so I've got, this is my corgi brown still. I'll add, um, I'll add some more black, add some blue, add some red. Just really make it a gucky mess. Yeah, it's darker. I wouldn't say it's dark chocolate, but maybe milk chocolate. Maybe a little more red. If you have a pre-mixed chocolate brown at home, use it. Much easier than mixing up. Let's get a little more yellow. And your beaver doesn't have to be the exact same shade as mine. Let's give that a little try. Oh, that's lovely. Look at that. That's pretty good. Yeah, I added a bunch more red, bunch more blue, a little bit more yellow, a little bit of black, really darken it. Look at that. Semi-sweet chocolate. So as I was um, setting up for the event tonight, I was getting some paint on my palette here. And then I dropped a whole bunch of blue paint right on my sock. So some of it must have soaked through. I think I have blue skin on my foot right now. We'll see what happens when I take off the sock. And I got some on my hands. I mean, there's always paint on my hands, but on my foot, doesn't happen a lot. Okay, there's a nice chocolatey beaver color. I think if you have some visible brush strokes that you can't like smooth out, that just adds to like the furriness of the animal, I think. That's how I view it. Okay, so yeah, your tail could be the same shade of brown if you want, or just throw in a little bit more yellow, a bit more red, make it just slightly different shade of brown. Just to give it a little more interest. That's slightly different. Oh, I like that. Pretty good. Yeah, we're getting some nice, good, solid first coats on a lot of animals. Yes, Susan, the sock will have that blue mark, but it's a black sock. So it's, I think it'll be okay. If it was a white sock then, whew. Give that a little rinse. Everything, um, because we've done quite thin coats, my giraffe's almost dry. Okay, what will I do next? I'm thinking I'll do the pink, yeah, I'll do the pink pig butt. Why not? Um, there are different color pigs out there. They're usually not, um, you know, 
that pink. They're kind of a faded pink. I've got white, I've got red. Let's make some pink. I guess something that I, I didn't add to the original pink pig butt, I could have added some mud to his butt as an extra little fun detail. If you want to add some mud later on to your pig butt. There you go. That's a lovely, lovely pink, a little red, a little white. I just go carefully near any wet paint. So I know that this leopard is more wet than, than not. So I'll just go carefully near it with the pink. If there's like a little sh smear, little smudge, um, you can fix that with, with the outlining later. It's a nice soft pink. I like that. Good, yeah. Um, I'm gonna do a gray elephant. Do a pink elephant if you want, do purple, gray. And then I'll do, I'm gonna do a gray tabby cat butt, but you can do any kind of cat butt calico um solid color um yeah whatever you want spotty whatever you feel like tuxedo little tuxedo cat okay i'll do a little gray so uh, black and white is gray here's some white a little bit of gray and I gradually add the black so I don't um, make my gray too dark too quickly Just add a little bit of black at a time and I mean some elephants are more brownish to grayish so it could be maybe put a little brown in there too A little test. Um, yeah, I mean it's a little darker than my original, but I think it's a cute shade for an elephant. Again, nice and thin. We want this to dry. And don't worry about wrinkly edges, rough edges. Mm, it's our 10th butt. Painting. I should have done 10 butts. Why didn't I do 10? Why did I do nine? 10 would have been awesome. It still makes sense. Okay, there's my gray. And don't forget the tail. So the tail kind of got lost a little bit, but I just invent it kind of maybe this way and then up this way. Sure. 
sure. Okay, and then uh, I'm gonna do the gray tabby, but I might lighten that just so it's like a slightly different lighter gray. Let's just try that. Oh yeah. We are gonna add dark gray onto the tabby. We're gonna add white. So I think a lighter gray is nice. You could do a nice light orange, nice light brown tabby. Lovely. Do the tail. I guess you could have like a white tip on the tail or another color. like that. We're almost there. Um, our panda, I think that's the only bit of exposed canvas that I have left, but maybe you have different animals that you haven't quite gotten to yet. Black, need some black. Black just on these kind of panda thighs. Let's call it the thigh. And I'm going to try to make them the same kind of shape and size as best you can. So that's like the first coat. We're gonna add detail, we're gonna add patterns. If you need to address any other animals that you have, uh, just hit pause and work on those at your own pace. Yeah, it's a nice little mix. Not too many let's say just like a bunch of brown animals. There's a lot of brown animals out there. I think this is a nice little mix. 
give you a minute. I need a little, little drink. Mm -hmm. I'll let that dry a moment. What can I show you while we have a little dry break? Let me show you some upcoming events with me. If you are enjoying my hosting style, my art style, let me show you what's coming up. I'll even give you a really sneaky sneak peek because uh, we haven't even shown this to anyone. It's not on the website. It's not on Facebook. Let me get it. Let's get this one. I'm going to show you this one. I've got so much cute stuff coming up. What's coming up next week? So I usually teach every Thursday. Today's Thursday. I'm going to teach next Thursday uh, a watercolor. If you've never done watercolors, learning with me is easy. Very beginner friendly watercolor tutorials with me, Chris. So next week on Zoom, tickets on our website. We are doing this floral and bee themed customizable monogram in watercolors. You get tracers for all the letters. So you choose the letters of your choice. Doesn't have to be mine and my husband's initials. That'd be weird. And we go step by step on Zoom. And um, yeah, the Zoom classes are smaller classes. So there's more one on one with me. You can ask questions. You can turn on your camera and show me your work as we go, get advice. And, uh, and it supports me if you enjoy uh, doing some of these free events that we put on, a way to support your favorite artists online. You don't need to tip me, but if you get tickets to some of my events, that supports me. So that's next Thursday. Tickets on the website meant to be on the 16th, so two weeks from now. A sweet little sloth. So if you're into animals, and maybe you are because we're doing animal butts, a sloth in acrylics on canvas. And I just chose kind of like a, a tall, narrow canvas. But you can do this on any shape, size canvas. It doesn't have to be a tall, narrow canvas like this. You could do it on a, on a nice 16 by 20 like this. Sweet little sloth on Zoom. Tickets on our website two weeks from now, February 16th. I'll show you something fun. We've done this before. We've done this on YouTube. Um, there's a, a video already on YouTube of a coffee inspired painting. We're gonna do it again. This one's gonna be on Zoom. So tickets are on the website. It is a, I called him my little library friend. February is library lovers month. So we're going to do this in coffee. So it's not paint. It is literal coffee with a paintbrush on watercolor paper. Isn't he cute? I got some funny little gnome puns. Sherlock gnomes. Game of gnomes. I thought that was funny. Join me for that. If you want to try the free coffee event before you do the paid coffee event, uh, the one on YouTube right now is Tipsy Teacups in Coffee and Tea. So that's February 23rd for the library friend. Now it's time for the sneak peek because no one else has seen these. Uh, I'm not even sure what date. Let me show you the free one. So this one will be free beginning of March, sometime in March near the beginning, free on YouTube Live. This is a sneak peek. No one's seen this yet. You're going to love it. It's a pub sign to kind of go with like St. Patrick's Day. But I was thinking what kind of a pub sign would be really cool that people would want to make for free. The three broomsticks. 
And you're like, what, what's that from? This is maybe a clue. Pumpkin juice, butter beer, served at the Three Broomsticks Pub. Where's that from? Someone tell me. Broomsticks, pumpkin juice, butter beer. I think we all know. It's from Harry Potter, of course. So that's the, the kind of pub, uh, an inn, probably an inn as well, in Hogsmeade. Yeah, Jared's got it. So join me sometime in early March for free on YouTube Live right here. We're gonna make the, the wood effect. We're gonna make the, the broomsticks logo and I'll have a printable with the text so you can kind of reference the text as you paint it um, or just do whatever kind of text or handwriting you wanna do. And then last painting I'm gonna show you before we get back to our, it's still drying, it's getting there. Um, this one's so new I don't have a date for it either but sometime Beginning of March, it'll be uh, tickets on our website, on Zoom. Here it is. So I called it Four Lucky Friends. Uh, so the background is kind of a uh, out of focus bouquet effect. Bouquet, B-O-K-E-H, kind of a photography effect where the background is out of focus spots of light and then some leprechaun silhouettes. So we're gonna do that on Zoom, uh, beginning of March. Just in time for St. Patrick's Day, I think that'd be cute. Jared has done uh, the beach butt, yep. Beach butt was um, last summer. Yeah, I wanna say last summer for the beach butt. Besties, those were cute. Okay, some of these are dry. That one's not dry. Whoops. <laughs> Don't touch that. We're going to add spots. We're going to add stripes. We're going to add the, the open spots here. Let me get um, like medium or small brush. Up to you what works best. <clears throat> um, I've got some brown here from earlier. Might as well use that for the giraffe spots. It's kind of reddish brown. I could add a little black, gray it down a little bit. Any brown, any brown for your giraffe spots. <clears throat> pretty big, pretty chunky, squarish, um, not leaving a lot of room between kind of thing. Some of them look kind of like pentagons. And I'm gonna I'm gonna treat the tail separately from the rest of the body. So for now, I'm gonna avoid getting paint on the tail. Um, yeah, let's just start with any old shape, something like that. Everyone's giraffe spots are gonna be different. They could be kind of rounded. They could be kind of squarish. But I think the main thing is that they're quite close together, leaving little, um, like little alleyways between each spot. Some could be longer, smaller, bigger. But whatever you do, they're. There's no doubt that this isn't a giraffe. People are gonna look at it and be like, yellow, brown, giraffe. I'm just gonna try to avoid my tail for now. So I'm using like my medium brush, but if you're finding that difficult to maneuver and control, switch to a smaller brush. I just have a lot of practice with this particular little guy. We go way back.
that's looking quite giraffey. Sometimes when I'm painting a particular painting or looking at a particular painting, I'm reminded of when I did the original one. It kind of brings me back. Or I think about, let's say, the episode on Netflix that I was binging at the time of making the painting. So when I when I'm making when I made this painting, the original, and when I'm making this one. It puts me in mind of the the Rose Bowl parade this past, uh, it was actually on January 2nd this year because they don't do the Rose Bowl parade on Sundays and it happened to fall on a Sunday, so they did it on January 2nd. Just like a funny little thing that I think about or other paintings, I'll think about a particular episode of whatever I was watching at the time. Memories are triggered by other senses, visual things, smells, sounds. Just got some little teeny tiny little spots on my little tail. Again, use your smaller brush for smaller areas. I'm just kind of banging it out with this big guy because I'm just used to it. I suppose with the kind of heart Valentine theme we have sort of going on, you could do some of these spots as hearts, like hidden, hidden hearts could be cute. Or in the, um, the leopard later on. Hidden hearts. I'm happy with that kind of giraffey look. Is it perfect? No. Do I have kind of bigger gaps? Yes. Like brush marks visible? Yes. That's okay. Some are lighter, some are darker. They're not all super crisp. I'm not worried. Not at all. Let's do, I'm thinking, zebra. Yeah. That seems logical. You could do your standard black and white zebra. What if you want to do a rainbow zebra? Rainbow stripes. You could totally do that. Um, Again, I'm using this medium brush because I'm going to kind of hold it on an angle to get that pointy skinny bit, but definitely use a thinner brush if you want to get some nice thin zebra stripes. And they're all kind of converging uh, <laughs> towards the middle, 
towards the crack. And then we'll do the, the tail kind of separately. All right, give me some black here. Everything kind of pointing towards the middle. Thick to thin, out to in. Yeah, yours could be thinner than that. There could be m more of them than mine. Whatever you feel like. Every zebra is as unique as, as a fingerprint, as a snowflake. Are they perfectly even? Nope. That's fine. And then what did I do for the tail? Yeah, zebras have an interesting tail. It's stripy, but then there's like a long, thin stripe down the middle. So I'll add this bit here, and I'll add some of like these stripies, but then I'll do this line and the outside lines with the paint pen. And that's the easiest way. So right down the middle is kind of like a dark bit. Yeah, I think I'll use a smaller brush for the smaller stripes. Shocking. And then, um, should I do it in paint pen or should I do it in wispy, long wispies? Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, it looks it looks really cool like that, even without the outlines. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit of shading to the elephant butt. You can kind of see, here it is. There's a little bit of shading right here, right here. I've got some gray, I've got a little bit more black to the gray, so a darker shade than what we had here. Hmm, so I can still sort of see my pencil lines of where the tail base was. If you're having trouble seeing that again, you could get your pencil and just lightly sketch that. But I can kind of see it. I'm going to kind of outline it. It's a little bit darker, this gray. So that's where the tail goes off that way. But right in this, like, 
butt crack area is really where I just want to add a little bit more gray. Which I'm just keeping it very light, very wispy. Barely, hardly any paint on my brush. And I'm also going to put a little bit around the bottom of the heart. Wispy, very wispy, very dry brush. That's all I did. More detail will be added for wrinkles with the pens, or you could do that with a thin brush. Okay, what else has gray? Oh, the kitty cat, the tabby butt has gray. Um, let's put, what if I put this? There's the tabby butt. Um, if I do like this, ah, so some gray, I've got gray on the brush, just anything darker than that gray of the tabby bit. If you did say orange or brown, just a darker shade of that, um, like little mini tornadoes, <laughs> like a triangly shape that's kind of messy going towards the center like when you're drawing like a tornado we've all drawn a tornado before doodling on our notebooks as a kid all towards the middle i'll do kind of a darker crack Still makes me laugh. I'll do some bands across the tail. Very wispy, very light. Maybe, maybe that much. You decide how many. Yeah, that seems good. I'll also put some white in too. It's not just gonna be only those. good. Gray. Um, does anyone else need gray? Not really. I mean, I have a little, little bit of gray on the panda, just like a little hint around the tail. Barely there. A little bit right in that crack, but super light. just to help show the tail a little better. Just a little. Wisp, wispy, wispy, a little bit in this crack. Okay. 
And like if you've gone like too dark, just get a little white and go on top of it, kind of mute it. Dilute it a little with some white. Okay. I do have a little teeny tiny bit of shading on the pig and the corgi, and that's about it. That's about it. Let's look at um, what I did for the pink pig, but similar to the elephant in that I just added a little bit darker pink up the crack and along kind of the sides there. So the pink that I have with a little bit more red, just to make it a little darker. Um, a lot of my pig got covered with the cat tail. I might put a little darker, um, let's say along the tail. That's really all I want to do for that. Very slight, subtle. Okay, and then the last bit was just around the corgi, kind of fluffy white area. Like yellowy brown. Light brown. And I'm gonna like wipe, wipe off, wipe off your brush, like on the edge or on the rag, just so it's like very wispy. Up the up the crack a little bit, light wispy. Go around a little bit here. Um, we'll add some spotties and we'll add some white stripies. Those are our last two kind of like second coats of things. So we'll add some white to my cat or you could add a different color. White, I'll have some white stripies. Some different brown tones if it's more of a brown tabby 
a darker orange tone for an orange tabby. Whatever. Feels right. Black even. Get some black ones going. Yeah, I think a lot of brown tabbies have a lot of black stripes, more than you would think. Okay. I'm also going to do um, kind of like the uh, butthole, um, like a snowflake shape. Just kind of wispy. Very wispy. Yeah, it's, it's not crisp, it's very light, kind of like a dry brush for the butthole. Cute, yeah, that's looking fuzzy. And yeah, the last kind of detail, which you could, you could do these spots, uh, the leopard spots with the Sharpie. Try that. Max, come here. Max is attacking the couch. Come here, come say hi. All right, leopard spots. So open, they could be thick, thin, lumpy. They kind of remind me of like lipstick prints, if you know what I mean. Um, they don't have to be all the same shape or size. Some can be more filled in, but if you're filling all of them in, that's more like a cheetah and you could definitely do a cheetah print instead. And then I'm not sure about like a jaguar. I'll have to look that up. What is the difference with the Jaguar? Yeah, I can have some, some that are filled in once in a while. Are these the most perfect leopard print spots you've ever seen? Probably not. But does it kind of convey what I want it to? Yeah, it's a big cat. There's no doubt that this is a cat.
Hey, you come over here. It's quite leopardy. I'll do the tail and then um, I was looking at like the tails of the leopards as it gets closer to the tip those ones were more filled in if we were trying to be somewhat realistic slash accurate. So I'll do some open ones here open spots, but then as I get closer to the tip, I'll just kind of close them up, make them just a blob. That's just what I observed on the internets. There, something like that. Looks complicated, looks like we spent forever doing those, but not too bad, once you get the hang of it. Yeah, and like one or two bad ones that you know didn't turn out right, no one's gonna notice those, because there's, there's a hundred of them. Okay, Bailey, these cats are just menaces. Now they're going after the dinner. Well, they're not gonna get much. They can lick the pots and pans. Go. Yeah, so that's like, that's pretty much all the painting that we need to do. And it looks great as is. You don't have to have all the outlines that I have. This is like a softer look, I think. You could add like a little bit more shading, like the tail, the, oh, we'll need, We'll need the elephant tail, we'll need the giraffe tail, but like, it looks pretty good like that. If you didn't want to have all those um, cartoony kind of outlines and highlights and things, but I like the look, so I'm gonna do it. There's my giraffe tail. And elephant, yeah, just some black or some dark gray. Yeah, so, I mean, the painting itself took us two hours. Quick little outline. Um, Sharpie does a good job. Don't rule out the Sharpie as an art supply. I'm going to use these paint pens, though. Very handy. everything's pretty dry as I outline things I'm not just gonna straight outline them I'm gonna add little jaggedy fuzzy bits I'll show you in a sec I'll do a bit and then I'll hold it up okay here's the beaver I outlined it but made it a little bit jaggy looking a little shaggy like it has fur but kind of like go with the flow of fur. It would go this way and out, uh, not the opposite direction. And I keep it kind of um, random, not, you know, not every one inch specifically.
gives the beaver tail some crisscrossy texture. Really, a beaver tail is more scaly. When you see a beaver tail up close, it's more scaly than um, crisscross pattern. But that's just how people draw them. I don't know why. Little corgi tail. If you had paint pens of different colors, you could choose appropriate colors for each animal, like a nice dark pink outline for the pig, a brown for this corgi butt. I think it just snazzes it up, makes it kind of pop off the page a little bit more. <laughs> um, how does the cat tail go? And you can take much more time perfectly outlining everything. It helps tidy up some messy edges too. do the pig kind of smooth. He's not as fuzzy as the other creatures. They do have hair on them though. Yeah, I think it just makes it um, separate from the background. It's above the background, but that's just my opinion. Ooh, that was a big blobby blob. Yep, I even outlined the black areas with black. Let's see, are you guys dry? These are pretty dry. Thank you. 
good. Yep, got six done. Top row. Add some extra creases or wrinkles, I guess you could say, to the elephant. Not so much fuzz, but just like wrinkles, creases, like indents. He's a lumpy guy. line separating the two cheeks and then I did add some extra wrinkles kind of from the inside going outward a few others Creases, wrinkles. Oh yeah, he's looking saggy. Um, yeah, what did we say about the, the zebra tail? Let's look at that again. Outlined, but then there's a line right down the middle Some some reason. They have a line down the middle. And my giraffe. Now I'm not going to outline every spot. I'll just leave the spots as they are. So that's everything like roughly outlined, but I did add a couple little extra little fuzzes here and there. So here's some here near the edges, mostly just um, kind of like lightning bolts. We could call them. Here's some, here's some, the pig is a little bit smooth. So I just put some extra lines for the smoothness, lightning bolts of fuzz around the outer edges. If you like it, do it. If you don't like it, don't do it. Even, yeah, just kind of throughout. 
out the beaver, just give them extra fuzziness. bunch of wrinkles to the elephant but yeah doesn't that make the panda just like a little bit fuzzier the corgi seems a little fuzzier yeah I mean it looks great just like that you could be done at that point but I like to add just like a little bit of white just a little bit of white you can do that with the thin brush and white acrylic but i've got a white paint pen might as well use that so i'm thinking you know the top part of the animal might have a little highlight here and there a little bit of white to make it really pop wrinkly wrinkly elephant a little bit of white Ooh, a little bit of white hairs in the tail that tail even this tail even this tail Where else? Maybe right in here. Yeah, just little hits of white. Just little highlights here and there. What a difference. All right. I'm happy with that. I'm going to sign it. You could sign it with paint, with marker, however you like. You could put your whole autograph. You could put just your initials. You could have the year in there. There we go. So there's that one. Here's the original. Not too far off. I cannot wait to see your versions. I want to see different animals. I want to see different arrangements, different colors, whatever you feel like. I want to see it. Um, we have an awesome Facebook group, artist palette, painting slash drawing support group. You could post this one, any others you've done with us. Maybe some original stuff that you've made that's been inspired by what you've learned. We'd love to see it. Um, let me see if I can get, I'll get the link to that group. 
and I'll put it in the chat. Painting slash drawing support group. And also it has the free events posted in there. Put it in the chat. Paste. I might have already put it in the description of this video. I can't remember if I did uh, down in the description down below here. Might have a link to that same group. Uh, again, you can watch this anytime. Maybe today you just were watching and then maybe tomorrow you'll watch and follow along at the same time. That's a strategy. Check out any of the other butt series on the channel already. There's nine others. This is number 10 already. Jared said he did a crocodile. Awesome. I can't wait to see that. Yeah, with the long tail, kind of spiky, scaly. Yes. Coffee Gypsy says, kids love butts. I think adults love butts just as much. <laughs> there we go. The culmination of nine other butts paintings into one. What a conversation piece. You have this in your living room, in your kitchen. People come in and they're like, what is that? And you're like, animal butts, obviously. <laughs> All right. I would love to see you guys in a future event. If you maybe join me for another uh, YouTube live in the future, say hi. Or maybe you will uh, help support me by getting a ticket to one of my Zoom events. Again, we're having a sale, minimum 35% off. The coupon codes are on our Facebook post about our, our sale. We're celebrating our new website. Same address, artistpalettedurham.com. Just a different uh, website, new layout. All right, any questions at all about this painting, about um, anything I showed you a little bit earlier, anything that's on your mind, but suggestions. I've been meaning to try some kind of undersea butt painting, but it's it's hard to wrap my wrap my mind around the rear end of a fish. The rear end of a shark is like it's it's thin it's a fin it's not like juicy you know like mammal butts those are fun recognizable i don't know about under the sea i've been trying to figure out a good way to do under the sea butts all right any other questions yeah you can um message us on facebook or email us if you have further questions I've kept you, oh, I've kept you an extra 20 minutes today. It was all that outlining we had to do. All right, I don't see any questions. I hope everyone has a lovely rest of their evening and the rest of the week and have a good weekend. Can't wait to see pictures posted a little later. Don't disappoint me, guys. All right, have a good night. Happy painting. Bye, Susan. Take care. Bye, guys.